My name is Heather, and I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit today about Orcas and the Exxon Valdez oil spill and the population decline of the H1 transients in the wake of the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Oops, went too far. Um, the Exxon Valdez oil spill happened on March 24th, 1989. Um, the supertanker had gone out of the shipping line to avoid some icebergs, and it was maneuvering around and getting itself back into the shipping line when it ran aground in Bly Reef, which, by the way, was very clearly marked on the ship's navigation system, but the ship ran into the reef anyways, possibly because um, the third mate was left in charge by a drunken captain. Um, the cause, this, you know, the, the ship crashing into the reef caused eight of its 11 cargo tanks carrying oil to burst open. Um, this is probably because of a single hull. Um, if you can picture a U-shape, you could see that the minute the tanker crashed into the reef that it began spilling oil. <clears throat> um, the oil slick eventually expanded to cover 700 kilometers and cover 3,400 square kilometers and contaminate 1,990 kilometers of shoreline habitats. Um, you can see the location of the damage here. Up here is Valdez, where the ship was leaving from. Shortly after that, you'll see the grounding site. And the rest of this just shows, um, you know, on day four, the oil slick had moved out 37 miles. On day seven, 90 miles. Day 11, 140 miles. Day 14, 150 miles. Day 19, 250 miles. Day 40, 350 miles, and day 56, 470 miles. So they're very obviously not um, successful in stopping the spread of the oil or keeping keeping it um, contained. So uh, what does oil do to wildlife? <clears throat> um, the vapors from crude oil can cause ulcers and internal bleeding um, <clears throat> that because of the carcinogens that it contains such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons um, and the chemical dispersants that they use to break up the oil can cause reproductive problems in marine mammals and animals that are higher up on the food chain have an even greater risk because not only are they being exposed due to the inhalation and ingesting themselves but they're also feeding on smaller animals who have been exposed to the toxic chemicals as well. Um, and this is just a picture of the food webs in Prince William Sound. Um, we talked a lot about food webs this semester. And you can see that the transient killer whales that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes are at the very top of the food chain. And you can see the animals that they're preying on. And, you know, it goes the carnivores, the herbivores, the primary producers. So all the way up to the transients at the top who are having the hardest time recovering from this oil spill. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the cleanup of the Exxon Valdez. Um, when the tanker ran aground, it began to leak immediately, obviously. Uh, it took six hours for any kind of help to come to try to start any kind of cleanup efforts. Um, some of the cleanup efforts that were used were the chemical dispersant cleanup, where they pour chemicals into the water that basically eat the oil. Um, they did a physical cleanup where they sent crews out to literally take the oil out of the ocean with buckets. And they even tried to do some, um, they set some of the oil that was at the surface on fire. The problem with that is that it only cleans the surface oil. Um, also, Alaska's location is probably a big part of the reason why it took so long to get any help. Um, also, they're trying to avoid hurting the wildlife while trying to clean up the oil to help the wildlife. And the wind in the area um, was also making, making it very difficult to contain the oil. So the wind kept moving it further and further out to sea. A little background on orcas is that uh, there are three distinct ecotypes that live in the Gulf of Alaska. The residents are the fish-eating orcas, the transients are the marine mammal-eating orcas, and the offshores. Not much is known about them, but they eat mostly sharks and large fish from what we can see so far. Uh, the average lifespan for wild orcas are 30 years for males with a maximum of 50 to 60 years, and an average of 50 years for females with a maximum of 90 to 100 plus years. Um, orcas have a very slow reproductive rate. Um, females start calving at about 13 and have one calf 
only about every five years until 40 when she goes into menopause. Um, another problem is that the cat's mortality rate is about 50%. <clears throat> the AT1 transients are the most genetically divergent population of orcas that inhabit William, Prince William Sound. They're the part of the mammal, mammal, marine mammal eating population. Um, this specific population feeds mostly on harbor seals and dolls porpoise. Um, when the Exxon, Exxon Valdez oil spill happened, there were 22 in the population. By January 1991, there were 11. Um, during the cleanup efforts of the Exxon Valdez, these orcas specifically were seen and positively identified swimming in the oil slick. And this is a picture that demonstrates that. There's the Exxon Valdez after it already run aground, and there's the oil, and there's the whales swimming in it. This is um, the AT1 transient population. As you can see, they were 22 in number. The lighter gray ones represent deceased orcas, and the pictures obviously represent the alive orcas. Now, if you'll notice, there's quite a few one, two, you know, there's quite a few ones that say that they died in 1990, which is in the year immediately following the oil spill. And you'll also see one in 92 and 91. So you can see where their numbers have gone. Um, the study I chose for this was called Contrasting Abundance and Residency Pattern of Two Sympatric Populations of Transient Killer Whales, or Sinus Orca, in the Northern Gulf of Alaska. Um, two populations that were studied were the AT1 transients, as I mentioned, and the Gulf of Alaska transients, which for this study included all, all transients found in the Gulf of Alaska that were not the AT1s. The study was done over a 27 year period from 1984 to 2010. Um, the study used a photographic mark and recapture method, which is just like a traditional mark and recapture method, except instead of actually capturing the animals, they used pictures. Um, and they also used satellite transmitter tags, and they were trying to determine the emigration and re immigration rates for both populations. Um, also tried to determine the probability of survival for each population and determine the number of individuals in each population and the abundance of orca in each population. Uh, the results, um, over the 27 years, 88 individual whales were seen, 66 were Gulf of Alaska transients, and 22 were the AT1 transients. The average number of individuals each year was a mean of 8 with a range of 0 to 18 for the Gulf of Alaska transients and a mean of 7 with a range of 4 to 22 for the AT1 transients. Um, the Gulf of Alaska transients showed a higher rate of exchange of individuals with a high immigration rate and a low rate of re-immigration. AT1s showed no exchange of individuals and a low rate of emigration and a high rate of re-immigration. Um, the study concluded that the AT1 transients are a localized inshore population headed for extinction, and the G Gulf of Alaska transients are a wider range, more oceanic population with relatively stable numbers. This is just a picture of the timeline of recovery from the oil spill. At the top, you can see animals in green that have recovered. Um, some of the things that we've talked about this semester, the rocky intertidal zones, um, subtidal communities, there's some seabirds, fish, harbor seals, river otters, um, and bald eagle. Some of the species that are still recovering are the clams, mussels, um, another pod of killer whales that are resident, the fish eating, um, some of the intertidal communities, some of the sediments, um, and at the bottom in red you'll see the species that are not going to recover. Um, herring took a pretty big hit in this oil spill. Um, and there's our AT1 transients, um, a species of pigeon, and two seabirds where their status is unknown. And this is just kind of the facts 25 years later of the Exxon Valdez. Um, it mentions the AT1 transients and the, although it lists them as the, and the Pacific herring and the pigeons that are not recovering. Um, it says as many as 580,000 seabirds, 5,500 5, sea otters, 200 harbor, harbor seals, and 22 orcas died. <clears throat> um, uh, these are, this is just a picture I wanted to end on a positive note of the H1 transients today. Though they are going extinct, there really is nothing that can be done now. 
um, they're living. And here is my Works Cited page.